the most dangerous screw you've ever installed as an electrician? You're probably thinking maybe a long screw that made its way to the back of a panel right through a wall and made contact with a bus bar. You might be thinking maybe you installed a huge screw, maybe you're standing on a ladder using a drill and you just got ripped off of the ladder. Maybe it was a hole saw, something like that. Maybe you're thinking the screw on one of these augers, maybe it's a trick question. Could be a screw that you drove really fast, pulled it out and it was really hot. But no, the most dangerous screw that you're ever gonna install as an electrician is probably this bonding screw because you might not realize the potential hazards that you can create by just installing this simple screw. Let's take a look at what this screw can do to your whole electrical system. This is known as a grounding bar or a grounding terminal bar. There's no isolators on this bar, meaning there's no like black plastic on the back of it so this is designed to go right up against the panel and pre-threaded holes attach this directly to your panel can this is really good for if you need extra spaces where you can land grounds without double lugging or doing some of the crazy things you see on some of my videos believe it or not but all the crazy things you've ever seen on my channel and the videos that i post are actually electricians that have actually done the things i'm an electrical inspector and the crazy thing is these electricians were expecting an inspection and still did the choices that you see so what does this bonding screw do well we know that it bonds the grounded to the ground Grounding, meaning the grounded would be your neutral and the grounding would be, well, your grounds. But where do the grounds come from? You're probably thinking they come from the earth, like this ground rod that I still need to install at my house. Be a video on how to drive this most effective way with minimal effort here pretty soon. Maybe I'll do it live. Let me know in the comments below. There's a difference between earth and ground and let's explain what bonding is very quickly. When you electrically bond something, you're pretty much making it the same value or the same potential. If we were to install the proper screw here and the proper screw in here, and we wrap this wire around here, we'd be bonding these boxes together. So this is a bonding screw. It's gonna tie your grounds and your neutrals together. But wait, we talked about the ground not being the earth. Well, what is the ground? You've heard people before say ground and neutral are the same, but what are they talking about? Let's look at an actual electrical panel. Now, my electrical panel is old and crappy, but it's perfect for this video because it's a real life scenario of what you might actually see if you went to a customer's house or maybe opened up your own. That wire coming in the back there, that's actually the main power to my whole electrical system. This is actually the main for my house. You got a hot there and we got another hot down there. But where's the ground? Well, there is no ground. All we have is just a neutral, which is that bare wire right back there. The biggest braided one back there. Like I said, this is a mess. If we look at utility transformer, this being the windings and the neutral, you'll see the neutral is in the center. You're gonna have 120 here and 120 here, which is gonna make up 240. And then from leg to the center of our transformer winding, you're gonna have the neutral. So this is still single phase, pretty much like that. So where does the ground come into play? It's created at the first disconnect where the neutral comes into your house, for example. Your ground is created for the purpose to bring current back to the neutral, which is the source. So what does that mean? Let me show you. Let's take a look inside this panel that I'm working on. This is my main, that's my neutral. You can see where it's isolated like we talked about on the black isolators. And you're gonna see the other neutral here. There's the bar that joins the neutrals together. And if we come over here, you're gonna see my ground bar. This is attached, it's not self-tapped, properly installed, and there's the grounds. Fairly small sub panel, but that's my feeder there. That's the main ground, and you're gonna see where it goes and gets fed right here. This is the main ground coming in and that's all of the grounds. Let's explain why they're isolated here because it's my sub panel. I'm gonna tell you what the grounds do versus the neutral. And then we're gonna kind of circle back to the whole earth thing. But we kind of got to break it down step by step so we don't confuse you guys. So if we show a panel, we got one leg here, we got another leg there, and the neutral, still single phase. We're gonna use blue as the neutral. Black will be one of the hots, red will be the other hot. What we're gonna do with this bonding screw, we're going to install this screw here through the neutral. What that's gonna do, it's gonna tie your grounds and neutrals together because your grounds are bolted directly to the case, just like we talked about that I showed you in my sub panel. Your grounds go to the metal enclosure. So anything metal that can become energized or have electricity on it because it's conductive, your grounds are going to attach to. So we're gonna take this screw and we're gonna install this into our neutral bar and that's going to attach our grounds and neutrals together. Typically you'll see where there's actually a bar that will physically attach the neutral and the grounds together, but we also need to bond our neutral to the case. We need our grounds 
to the case, the neutral to the case, and everything here at the first disconnect, the neutrals and the grounds, they all get tied together and we need to bond the case. For the purpose of this, we're gonna show a bonding screw here and I'm also gonna show the grounds attaching directly to the neutrals so we know that they are the same at the source. Now we can talk a little bit about the earth, not very much. Why do we attach to the earth? Why do we attach to metal water pipe? Things like that. Anything that becomes energized, that can become energized, just like this case, the enclosures, the metal boxes, anything that can carry current that's part of an electrical system that the electrical ties to, lights, plugs, switches, anything like that, we attach the ground wire to. I'm going to explain that in a second. The way that electricity kind of circulates, I guess you would say, the way that it flows, you've heard the word circuit, it's trying to return back to the source. If we wind up where we have a short, not just a short, but a ground fault, and there's a difference. Short circuit would be if we tied the hots together some way, whether it's accidental or purposely. If we tied the hots together, that'd be known as a short circuit. A ground fault is when one of the hot conductors touches the ground, the metal case, anything that become energized. That's why we take the ground wire to it, because it has a reference to ground, just like we talked about bonding. If this box here has a reference back to ground and we accidentally touch a hot to this box, the current is going to get onto the ground wire, which is actually going to get onto the neutral. It's going to come through the neutral, get back on the hot, and go back to the breaker that fed the hot that originally touched this box. We're going to say that again in a different way in case you didn't understand it, but we're going to talk about the earth for now. The earth is somewhat likely to become energized. It's kind of like an equipotential plane. We can also pick up gradient voltages from other sources and dump them back to earth so if we wind up picking up some kind of stray voltage in the earth and we don't want it to get onto our maybe our pergolas or grounded things like that in the actual earth we can get it back to the source and maybe send it back through the same transformer to get it back to the source to trip wherever the current or the voltage on the earth is coming from same thing applies with metal water pipe if we wind up with a mouse that chews up a wire and it becomes bare in the attic and one of the hots touches this ground the grounds come back to this ground bar as you know we have a ground bar here the grounds are back on here so if we wind up with current on these wires they go back to the source so it can trip the breaker now the idea of the earth actually able to trip a breaker because of resistance is not true at all you can't generate enough ohms to be able to trip a breaker based on the resistance of the earth we attach to the earth kind of as an equal playing field kind of a potential but the earth serves us no purpose in tripping a breaker the ground rods are based on 25 ohms if you do ohms law calculation you cannot create even 20 amps to trip a 20 amp breaker it just does not happen but for this to be a completed grounding electrical system we're going to go ahead and show some ground rods and maybe a cold water ground here now so there we go if we got building steel commercial building we'd also bond it because it's also likely to become energized because you might have lights or something like that the light cases become energized it's attached to the ceiling grid which is somewhat attached to the steel you see where we're getting at anything metal that is attached to something electrical must have a source back to or a reference back to the source the source being the neutral the grounds being the means to carry the current back to the neutral so we know that the neutral carries the current in single phase, it carries half the amount of current. Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop myself there. It carries half the amount of current with the grounds when you attach them wrong, but we're gonna get that to it in a second. The neutral carries the same amount of current as the hot in single phase. I drew a quick 20 amp circuit here going to this plug. In the event that this hot makes contact with this case, the current is gonna get on the ground wire. It's gonna make its way back to the neutral, go through the windings of the transformer, generating what you call available fault current, which is very high it's going to then go through the main breaker go back to the source and turn off that breaker with all the current that was generated through the process of clearing this fault we're going to clear this fault in about seven cycles there's 60 cycles in a second the faster we can do this the less total amperage and violent reactivity that we get trying to turn this breaker off let's look at what happens when we have a sub panel and you're going to quickly understand why this screw is so damn dangerous. First, we're gonna plug a 10 amp fan into this load. Uh, we don't have a multimeter here to show you, but current on the fan is gonna be 10 amps. We're gonna wind up with 10 amps on the hot 
and the return we're going to have 10 amps on the neutral as the return as the circuit goes through so in this case the neutral is carrying current on this wire back to the source we drew our terrible sub panel in here really quickly we've got the grounds it goes directly to the ground bar we've got the neutrals going back to the neutral bar keep in mind it wouldn't matter because these are all the same things so you could just put them both in the same bar this is where it gets very important that you have a separate ground and a separate neutral. If we were to refeed this plug onto a circuit here, I think we'll do that right now. For dramatic effect, we're going to make this fan 30 amps. We also hardwired our fan. It was at the inside of the breaker, so we didn't need a disconnect, blah, blah, blah. 30 amp fan, 30 amp breaker, 30 amp wire. Remember, blue is the neutral. Now, in this case, we're not even going to talk about a short circuit or a ground fault or anything like that. We're just talking about a normal scenario. In a normal scenario, we have 30 amps. Uh, we're just going to use the word 30. 30 amps on the hot coming through here. And we got 30 amps on the neutral in a circle. If we take this bonding screw and we install it here on the neutral and we bond the case because this ground is bonded to the case, we bond this neutral to the case. Effectively, we turn our ground also into a neutral because it is a parallel path. The source was here and then it landed here. It's completely the same. We just took half of the current that's regularly on the neutral. Remember, we don't want any current on our ground wires. The grounds are supposed to be safe to touch at all times. We're going to put 15 amps on our ground wire. We're going to put 15 amps on our neutral. And we only have one load plugged in. Keep in mind, this is a full sub panel. You, you could potentially have more current on your neutral coming back. Unlikely, but this is just how it works, okay? We got 15 amps on our ground. We got 15 amps on our neutral because we bonded our sub panel. I'm going to show you a scarier situation, but let's, let's just drive this home. We'll just use A and B. That's the uh, ground. That's the neutral. Okay, at the source like we talked about, I'm holding this camera sideways. Not easy doing this in one take, guys. Grounds, neutrals, grounds, neutrals. Remember, at the source, they are always bonded together to get the current back to the source. If we bond here like this, it's the same. The, the, you effectively turn your ground into a neutral. These may as well all be B. You're taking half of your current because it's a parallel path. It's going to divide by two. Back to the source. If somebody's working inside this sub panel, they pull this ground off, which is usually safe to touch. They're going to get 15 amps across their heart. That's how easy that is. It takes 0.30 of one amp to stop your heart. Time for the scarier situation. What happens if we bond the cold water? What if what if we don't bond the neutral, but we bond the cold water and we left it in an old sub panel because, hey, more grounding is better than less grounding, right? So we had the cold water here and here, and they were, you know, cold water's continuous. It's copper under the ground, under your house. We left it bonded to the neutral like it was because maybe this was the main panel in a closet and you just left it or or even better yet we just left it on the ground that's not going to attach to the neutral let's just leave it on the ground what did we just do grounds and neutrals are the same here let's look at what we just did if this is our sub panel and this is our main panel they're both bonded here and we have a ground fault we're going to get current on the ground we're not even going to draw the feeder wires from the service or whatever you want to call it to this sub panel we're just going to show you the path the current is going to get on on the ground well this is also the ground this is an effective path back to the neutral you just energized everything in the ground in the earth on its way back to the source if you have metal uh, p-traps you have sinks you have cast iron drains things like that and there's a better uh, source of ground on its way you could wind up with arcing everyone's seen that viral video of that sink popping that's what we're talking about here now, if we bond this sub panel by an accident with this bonding screw right here, we are effectively purposely installing current onto our metal water piping system. I'm gonna draw you a scarier situation. If we left our cold water bonded at our sub panel and we bonded the neutral to the ground in our sub panel, also we have cold water, not the drain. We have cold water that is energized. That's constantly going back. We remember we put 15 amps onto the ground wire. So effectively, we probably are dividing it by three now because we're going to have a third on the cold water, a third on the neutral, and a third on the ground when we bond in the sub panel. Call it 
six, just call it 6.7 amps, right? The drain is cast, so it's also ground. We have ground rods outside. The drain is also a potential. When we turn on our water spigot, if we touch our water spigot, if we touch the metal water piping system, if we touch our dryer, which is got the ground and neutral bonded together because it's old, we touch any of our appliances with water, and we're standing barefoot because the slab is also, you know, the ground. We've got current on the pipe, we got current on the ground, we got current on the drain. When you turn the water on and the water, which is now energized, makes contact with the drain, which is grounded, that's that viral video you guys are seeing. This screw should be kept out of all sub panels. A lot of people, whenever I do my inspections, I pull this screw out. They say, hey, that screw wasn't doing anything. You should just leave it alone. No, a handyman's going to install this screw knowing what they're doing. This screw is the most dangerous screw that you can ever install as an electrician. Enough said. What do you guys think? Let me know. Sub for more, and we'll see you guys in the next one.